Good morning, everybody. It's 837 on WMAL, where Washington comes to talk. Brian Wilson, Larry O'Connor, back from vacation. Joining us on the line, Mark Levin, the great one. Good morning to you, Mark. Well, I'm really the great big one, you know. If you, if you saw me, you'd know that. Uh, good. How are you guys? We're doing well. I, I want to get to the issue of immigration. Oh, my. Because, uh, you know, uh, George Will this weekend, well, he had this to say about those uh, young, unaccompanied minors who are coming to this country from Central America. My view is that uh, we ought to say to these children, welcome to America, you're going to go to school and get a job and become Americans. We have 3,141 counties in this country. That would be 20 per county. The idea that we can't assimilate these eight-year-old criminals with their teddy bears is preposterous. Well, do you agree with Mr. Will, or do you disagree? You know, uh, when he's good, he's good, and when he's bad, he's really bad. And I, and I will tell you, uh, there, there, there's a number of issues here. Number one, does he not believe in the rule of law? He writes column after column after column about a lawless president. We have immigration laws. Has anybody actually read these immigration laws? The injustice of people... You know, fighting to come through the front door when people are going around through the back door, that is injustice as a matter of fact. That's number one. Number two, we don't know who these people are. They're not all children. About 20% of them are what we would define as children. We have uh, MS-13 gang members coming in, people with all kinds of diseases coming in, full-grown adults with hair on their face and tattoos on their arm coming in. Uh, we don't know if terrorists are slipping in. We do know drug dealers are slipping in. Maybe George Will ought to spend a little bit more time in McAllen, Texas, and a little less time in Chevy Chase, Maryland. And I say this about all these people who ring the beltway and go on and on and on with these theoretical discussions. It's not going to wind up being 20 people per county. It's going to wind up with about five states being overwhelmed. Their health care system, their law enforcement system, their school systems. Uh, that's what it means. One other well, thing. Go ahead. This idea that we've always been a nation of immigrants, that's fine. But we've never been a nation of open borders. We've never been a nation of lawlessness and chaos and catastrophe like this. We have deported illegal immigrants. We've done it our entire history, except for the last 30 or 35 years or so. But we hear that the president's about to do something big on immigration through executive action. And he is. And I'm going to tell you something. This dates all the way back to when... Boehner became Speaker of the House, and his first act was to capitulate on the continuing resolution. He said, I'm not going to shut down the government. He was going to cut $30 billion from the budget. They wound up cutting like $30 million. He gave up his Article I power, the power of the purse, to control a lawless president across the board. And so if they're not going to use the power of the purse and impeachment's off the table, what can they do? Bring a lawsuit? You know what the federal courts are going to say? What do you want from us? That's your job. You took it off the table. It's not our job. So the Republicans have unilaterally withdrawn from the constitutional battlefield. Uh, Mark Levin, I, when I heard that you were going to be our guest this morning, I was so excited all weekend long. because oh, you, I'm sure. Well, I, well, you know that, because you just mentioned impeachment and, uh, and and Boehner taking it off the table. But if you listen to the White House, if you listen to the spokesman over there at the White House, they're talking about impeachment more than any Republican in Congress is. What do you think about this tactic of them constantly raising the issue and, by the way, raising money on the specter of the president's impeachment? It's like they're begging Congress to bring it up. Well, he's not going to be impeached. Uh, that's number one. Number two, there's a Democrat Senate. So why would you even bring articles of impeachment when the trial's in the Senate? Uh, and, 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 and the other point I would make is you've got to inform the people, the body politic, what impeachment's about, when it's to be used. If they go on TV saying we're never going to do impeachment, well, you're not building the case for impeachment. These guys don't build the, the constitutional case for anything. So I'm, I'm not sure what they're going to do now. I'd rather see them fight to uh, to uh, reinstate their power under the power of the purse under Article 1 and go at it that way. All right. Well, I, but but it, when you see the Democrats actually bringing this up, do you think that they're trying to goad Republicans into to, yeah. to, to, to bringing the issue Isn't up so that they can raise setting money? setting a trap? All right. I'm going to surprise you guys. Screw the Democrats. I don't care what they're bringing up or why they're bringing it up. My problem is the Republicans don't have an agenda. They don't have a political strategy. They sit there with their thumbs up their noses, reacting, reacting, reacting. I'll give you an example on this immigration issue. They should have, all of them, House, Senate Republicans, gone to the, gone to the border, just one idea, 
done their own Reagan speech, rather than tear down this wall, build up our security, where's Obama, make a demand. Where are they? Yeah. I don't know where the hell they are. I don't know what the hell they're doing. You want to know why? Some of them agree with this. They just won't say it. Look at George Will. He said it. Well, what, well, listen, one of the Republicans who wants to be a senator, former RNC chairman Ed Gillespie, right in your home state of Virginia, he had a debate over the weekend about the border policy, and uh, he said the kids need to go home. Uh, what did you think of the debate, if you saw any of it, and how do you think that race is looking? Warner seems to have a pretty good lead in your state. Well, uh... Excuse me, I didn't see the debate. What time was it again? It was. I, I know that was the amazing thing. This is the only Saturday. debate scheduled. It was Saturday at eleven thirty in the morning, and they did it in West Virginia, Mark. <laughs> yeah. well, listen, I heard some of what you said. Look, here's the bottom line: the country's gone to hell. The world's on fire, and as long as people can get free condoms, that's all that matters. Obviously, so uh, like we're having problems getting condoms. Have you ever had a caller call up and say, "I can't afford contraceptives"? Yeah. Have you ever had a caller say? I can't get contraceptives. Isn't nope. it quite the opposite? But that's all the media focuses on, on this race and most of the races, because they know that in some way it's a, yeah. apparently they think it's a vulnerable but issue for Republicans. Let me just say this about Mark Warner. He has gotten away with positioning himself as a moderate fiscal conservative his entire career. This guy is a radical, big government, open borders, high taxes, massive regulations, Obamacare liberal. That is exactly what he is. Okay, uh, real quick, we got about a minute left. Your, your sense of what's going on in Israel right now? Well, my sense of what's going on is Israel has a number of, uh, of enemies and adversaries, and I would include uh, Barack Obama and John Kerry among them. Wow. Israel needs to wipe out Hamas. And rather than the United States saying, we're going to help you wipe out this terrorist organization, which we have listed as a terrorist organization, part of the Muslim Brotherhood, being funded and supported by Iran and Hezbollah, what are we doing? All the pressures being put on Israel to give up, and not just give up on this quote-unquote no-term ceasefire, but on the terms that Hamas is demanding. I have never, ever seen anything like this in my life. Netanyahu would do well to string along Obama and Kerry and keep plowing ahead and do his best to defeat these people. Well, listen, we are all grateful that uh, you join us uh, when you do, Mark Levin. It's always a pleasure to have you. And well, so you thank guys you for are being terrific. Here. It's my honor. Well, thank you, Liz. And, and well, I know we're, we're so grateful for all the listeners who start their day with us here on Mornings on the Mall. Uh, they sh sure should be ending their day with you, uh, of course, every day here from uh, 6 to 9 on WMAL, the Mark Levin Show. Mark, thanks for joining thanks, us Thanks, Mark. Today. God bless. Thank you, guys.